we want people to see us as financially stable or wealthy, successful, holy, godly, respectable, having it all together. We think that living with vulnerability will bring shame and unpopularity. And as maturing followers of Jesus Christ, we need to be honest and vulnerable with our struggles, wounds, and sinfulness. We don't have it all together, my friends. Dear beloved friends, welcome back to Lesson 12, the last lesson in Part 2, Spiritual Transformation into Christ-likeness. In this lesson, we will learn the concept about vulnerability. How can we live with vulnerability? Before we start, let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for giving us your son to die for us. And we are washed, we are sanctified, and we are justified by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. That thank you that we can live with vulnerability. We don't have to wear a mask anymore. We don't have to feel insecure anymore with our limitation, with our handicap in our life. Um, we, we are grateful, Father, we can live with this kind of freedom and teach us, Holy Spirit, to be courageous, to live with this kind of vulnerability as the followers of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So friends, living with vulnerability. So this is a very uh, important statement and principle. The more mature we are in Christ, the more courageous we will be in showing vulnerability. We live in a society which values power and influence. We admire celebrities, famous people, and those with thousand social media followers, right? And as a result, we live wearing a mask. Showing vulnerability is considered as weakness. We want people to see us as successful. We, we want people to see us as financially stable or wealthy, successful, without any issues. I have no problem. Holy, godly, respectable, having it all together. We think that living with vulnerability will bring shame and unpopularity, isn't it? But in reality, every human is broken. Who is not broken in this world? No one is immune to sin. No one is immune to problems, struggles, and brokenness. And as maturing followers of Jesus Christ, we need to be honest and vulnerable with our struggles, wounds, and sinfulness. We don't have it all together, my friends. And why do we need to be honest about our weakness and struggles? Why? Have you ever thought about that? Because we will experience God's grace and healing when we are honest with Him and with others in our faith community. And furthermore, our messy lives will become God's message to those who are in need of His grace. And God can use the story of our brokenness and His grace to give hope to others who are hopeless. And what does it mean to live with vulnerability? It means we are being honest with our current struggles, failures, and weaknesses. We don't have to maintain the false image anymore to look good on the outside. And no one wants to appear vulnerable and weak, right? People want to be powerful and influential. Um, so how, how, can we, how do we wear a mask? This is how we wear the mask. Let me read it slowly, this statement, and see uh, for yourself, are you wearing a mask by doing this? I don't share my imperfections and failures with others. People around me describe me as defensive and easily offended. 
I cover up my mistake at all costs. I rarely ask for feedback from others on how I can change for the better. I don't show my sadness and struggles to others. I keep it to myself when I feel overwhelmed and anxious. I resolve my issues quietly by myself. It is difficult for me to ask for help from others. I would never appear needy and weak in front of my team. I lie to gain acceptance and respect from others. I must appear as though I have it all together in front of other people. So friends, this is how we wear masks. We are not daring. We're not courageous enough to live with vulnerability. So you must be thinking, <clears throat> what is this concept coming from? Is this even biblical? So this is the biblical perspective for living with vulnerability. Matthew 26, 37 to 38. This is Jesus. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. This is Jesus sharing his anguish, right? On the night before his crucifixion, he was struggling in the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus told Peter, James and John, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here with me and keep watch with me. So he's sharing his anguish, his deepest um, sadness. And he is not trying to cover up. He is not trying to wear a mask. He was showing his real self, his, his sorrow and struggle. He did not act tough. So Jesus is the kind of leader who is willing to show vulnerability agony, sorrow to his followers. If the Son of God was willing to be vulnerable in front of his disciples, then we must also be willing to live with vulnerability, especially in our church community. And another um, biblical reference is that from 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 28, it says, this is written by Apostle Paul, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. So this is even God's concept. God's concept is always paradox. God does not choose those who are wise by human standard, nor those who are influential or of noble birth. Instead, God chooses the simple and the uneducated people to shame the wise. God chooses the weak to shame the strong. God prefers to use lowly, and despise people so no one can boast. Therefore, being weak and vulnerable is seen positively from a biblical perspective. Um, so the statement before, how we wear a mask that I read it to you. So that's the wrong way, right? And what is the right way? So here it is. The wrong way is on the left, the right way, uh, living with vulnerability, what does it look like? When you take off your mask, what does it look like? Let me read it one by one. I don't share my imperfections and failures with others. Living with vulnerability will look like I share my imperfection and failures with my trusted church community or my trusted friends. People around me describe me as defensive and easily offended. I accept input from others. I truly appreciate people who make the effort to give me feedback. 
I cover up my mistake at all costs. The new self is that I admit my mistakes. I try to make right the wrongs I have done. I will make restitution if necessary. I rarely ask for feedback from others on how I can change for the better. The new self is I tell people that I would appreciate their input and feedback and how I can do better. I don't show my sadness or struggle to others. The new self is I share my sorrow and struggles with my trusted community. I keep to myself when I feel overwhelmed and anxious. The new self is I share my anxiety and ask help from others. I will ask my trusted community to pray for me. I resolve my issues quietly by myself. The new self is I discuss my issues with wise believers in my church and ask for their advice. It is difficult for me to ask for help from others. The new self is I will ask for help and I will also extend help to others who are in need. I would never appear needy and weak in front of my team. The new self is I share my weaknesses and struggles with my team so they can pray for me and so they might learn something from what I am going through. I lie to gain acceptance and respect from others. The new self is I live with honesty and integrity because it is pleasing to God. Pleasing God is more important than gaining acceptance from others. I must appear as though I have it all together in front of other people. The new self is I live with vulnerability. No one is perfect. I don't need to pretend that I have it all together. My friends know my struggle. So my friends, that is how we can live with vulnerability, lots of freedom there. And we don't have to pretend to become someone that we are not. So living with vulnerability is like walking with a limb that we are handicapped, that we are walking, that we are limping. And it is the concept that is very, very counter cultural. It is not easy. When we show our weaknesses, people might gossip about us or totally look down on us. There is a possibility that some people will, will reject us. However, there are also some people who will continue to love and accept us after they know our handicaps. In a way, living with vulnerability is living with a people filter. We will know which people are genuine and which one are not. Isn't it better that we spend our lives with genuine people who love us? Living with vulnerability is attracting genuine people to become our close friends, especially in our church community. And as a um, personal story, I would like to uh, share with you my, as an example of being vulnerable, um, I have a handicap also in my life that I have a PTSD, uh, like a trauma, post-traumatic syndrome from my childhood. Um, all of you already know my background, that I came from a family background that is very messed up. And because of that, there are layers of wounds and trauma that uh, I have that later on, uh, after I become adults, I start to come up and start to uh, bring effect into uh, who I am today. For example, today, the one that I'm struggling is that um, I still uh, have a struggle that I feel that I was used and abused by my mother. The reason of my existence is for her survival, that I am the tool uh, of her. Uh, I'm, I feel like I am like a cow being milked all my life since the day I was born until today. That might not be true, um, but that's how I uh, function 
And because of that, I have this PTSD that I cannot be around her. And this is quite heavy for me. I know the Bible said that uh, honor your father and mother. And I still want to obey that. I want to, I love God. I want to obey that uh, so that in this struggle, I make a, an appointment that I will provide for her. I will uh, give whatever that she wants, whatever that she needs. But to make me spend time with her, to be around her, I just cannot at this point. And been many years, and maybe this is only happening for the last 10 years. I don't know why. That is why uh, PTSD and then trauma from the past is like layers of onions that God bringing in, revealing it one layer at certain season of life. I still not overcome this. This is my limping. This is handicap. I am walking with a crutch in this area. And I just, and people around me know about this struggle. Uh, people who are close with me, I share it with them. And I hope that one day I can be healed from this. And because of this PTSD also, there are certain moments, certain people, type of people that in my life today that resemble of my past that makes me want to run away from those type of people. So this uh, PTSD is still affecting me uh, quite a lot. Uh, certain people who kind of like make me overwhelmed, like uh, dumping uh, their emotional garbage on me. I just feel that I want to run away. And that is how I guess I was emotionally drained when I was a child that uh, both parents are trying to brainwash me uh, with their issues. And then today, uh, I just basically cannot handle it uh, because of it's too much drain emotionally very easily. And I just want to run. Uh, and yeah, so I am still in the process. I'm still struggling with this very much. So friends, every one of us is broken. Um, no one is immune. No one have it all together. It's just a matter whether we want to admit it, whether we want to live with vulnerability or not. Um, if we are willing to live with vulnerability, there are more people who can understand, who can walk alongside us, pray for us in this struggle. Uh, so the principle that we can learn from this lesson is that number one, Living with vulnerability is biblical. As followers of Christ, we don't wear masks and pretend to have it all together in front of others. Number two, the more mature we are in Christ, the more courageous we will be in showing vulnerability. Number three, just like Jesus, we should be willing to share our struggles with our trusted church community. Without vulnerability, our community will not know how to pray, encourage, support, and help us. And for the application, uh, ask yourself this and share it with your friends. Number one, why is it difficult for you to be vulnerable to others? Number two, do you have anyone that you can be vulnerable with? Please share. Number three, what action are you willing to do as a result of this study? Again, we don't want to study just for information. Yeah, I know, and then move on. Okay, what's the next lesson? It's not like that. We study this new truth so that it can transform us. We need to practice each new truth in our life so that we can be transformed. Otherwise, will end up like the Pharisees. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for dying for us. Thank you that you give us a solution of our brokenness and we can have freedom to share courageously who we are. We can live without a mask. We don't need to pretend to become someone else that we are not. Father, we are all handicapped. We are all broken. We are all walking with a limb. We are not perfect. Help us, Father, to be vulnerable and to 
share this and to live with vulnerability so that our story can give hope to others. And also, we are open, we are humble for others to input and to speak into our life and to support us and to pray for us and to be a body of Christ who is healthy, that everyone is not wearing a mask in the body of Christ, but we can be honest to our church community. Give us those kind of people, Father, a community where we can be authentic, yet we can be loved and accepted, and we can be prayed for, hold accountable, and, and uh, love on and encourage and cheer on to still do this sanctification process to become more like Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So friends, see you in the next lesson on part three.